I wanted to begin by asking you, essentially, is the rate hike the first sign of withdrawal of stimulus? As, for instance, some papers have noted today that uh, U.S. markets and stocks in the U.S. have seen it. Well, I don't think it's the first sign because, quite honestly, we have been talking about uh, the need for some kind of an orderly exit. I think the Reserve Bank itself uh, raised the CRR rate some months ago. Uh, the budget indicated that the fiscal deficit in the current year is going to be reduced. Uh, you might say that the rate hike, very small rate hike, is actually consistent with what people have been expecting. I mean, the timing may have been a matter of speculation, but I, I don't think the direction of the change came as a surprise to the markets at all. When you say... And you're right in saying that this has been spoken of before, that there will be an orderly, phased-out withdrawal of, uh, of stimuli. Um, is there a time frame for that withdrawal? I mean, that's the big question that everybody wants to ask. Well, you know, it's never, you never set all these instruments to a time frame. I think what the... But a broader time frame? Anything well, what the government, I would anchor it around the fiscal deficit. I mean, a monetary, mon monetary policy will respond to however people view the underlying inflation rate as behaving, and if it turns out, uh, if it turns out as we think it will, that the inflation rate will moderate very considerably, maybe in a couple of months' time, uh, then, you know, the pressure to act on the monetary side will ease. But I think the fiscal reduction has to continue, because it's part of a, if you like, a medium-term macroeconomic uh, readjustment. Uh, that is a time frame of about two to three years. Because the, I, we're not going to get back to a very low fiscal deficit in less than three years' time. Were you surprised by the timing? Because a lot of people seem to be surprised by the timing. Yes, it was expected, but it was probably expected perhaps a month later. Well, you know, central banks very often like to surprise markets. I mean, the honest truth is that central banks should not act in a manner which is something completely contrary to what most think, people think is going to happen. So, in that environment, they can either follow the markets in an incredibly useless way or take the markets a little bit by surprise. So, I, I, I don't think it was a bad idea to take the markets by surprise. You have suggested that you see prices, especially food prices, sort of stabilizing and coming down uh, substantially in the next couple of months. Um, what, it, it's optimistic because many other people don't share that optimistic view. Uh, many believe that, you know, food prices especially are on an incessant upward spiral. Uh, what brings that optimism? Why are you sure well, that it's probably stabilized? Let me say, I didn't say food prices would necessarily come down. I said inflation will come down. Right. So, I mean, for prices to come down in a steady manner is virtually a deflationary situation. I don't expect that. But I don't expect uh, food inflation to be double digit uh, a few months later. That's, that was the key uh, point. Why am I optimistic about that? Well, first of all, I think some of the rise in food prices that we've seen is actually a relative price change. I mean, uh, we need a greater thrust in agriculture. Uh, farmers need to invest a lot more on the farm, uh, and that's only going to happen if production becomes a little more effective. Uh, and so there was, and, and globally, food prices have gone up quite a bit. So. Indian food price increase is sort of a reflection of what's been happening globally. Now, of course, in theory, I mean, you could have a, uh, you could have a relative price change and yet not have an overall inflation if other prices are flexible downwards. But, of course, they're not. So, whenever this happens, during the adjustment, not only food prices go up, the overall rate of inflation goes up. But, you know, barring any major change in the global inflationary situation, and particularly commodity prices, uh, I would not expect inflationary pressure to continue. And I think there's a lot of slack on the supply side. So we should get back to a comfortable 5% or thereabouts rate of inflation during the course of the coming fiscal year.